Hi, welcome to Monster Transmissions. Today we're going to go over a rebuild video on a Turbo 350. That's a GM transmission made from like 1969 all the way up to 1979. But this is a GM, specifically this is a Chevrolet unit. Uh, the bolt pattern here is for a Chevy engine block. And they fit V6s and also V8 engines in most GM applications. So it's a very versatile unit. It's very durable and it's also a hot rods favorite. So now we're going to go through how to disassemble this transmission. This one's freshly removed from a vehicle. So we have all the apparatus is still attached to it from the tranny mount, speedo gears, all those components. So we're basically going to strip this unit down to the bare case and then we're going to clean the components and go through how to rebuild a turbo 350. But first we want to start with, as you probably noticed, safety first. You make sure you wear gloves and you put on some safety glasses. So now we're going to get into actually removing components on the transmission. The first component we're going to start with is actually the tail housing. So rear of the transmission, we want to remove this rear seal. It's much easier to remove it while it's still attached to the transmission instead of trying to hammer the seal out chasing the tail around the bench. If you want to hammer into, you'll damage the lip, the casting of the pump, collapsing that seal down to remove it. Next item we're going to remove obviously is the the actual speedo housing on this side. Normally they come there with a SAE standard thread but this is a lady unit has metric bolts on it. So we're going to remove the speedo This one, this one has to be a 10 millimeter. And again, make sure you keep all these components together. We're actually going to put them in a transmission pan once we remove the pan. You remove that housing. Now we're going to remove the four bolts. Now those have a 916 head and it's a 3816 thread. So we're going to soften them up. We're going to hammer them a couple times with a hammer. And what that do, the shock will loosen up the, th the threads in the casting of the case. And then you can easily remove those four bolts. You've seen these bolts sometimes that have been on there for many years. Rear seals removed. This is the mechanical speedo setup for this transmission. We're simply going to depress this clip and this nylon gear will slide right off the output shaft. Gear and the clip. Next component we're going to remove is the actual governor assembly. This is a retainer clip. Simply remove this clip. And now we're going to remove this cover for the governor assembly. Again, it has a lip. You want to hammer away and not down in towards the cap because you go puncture a hole and then you'll have a leak. It has a rubber seal. Remove that seal. And this is the governor assembly. It will rotate out of the transmission case. This is the governor assembly. We're going to remove the balance of the linkage. This one happens to have a 15 millimeter, but normally they are uh, 9 16 Linkage is now removed. Now we're going to rotate the transmission around to remove the balance of the components. We'll start with the rear. This is the vacuum modulator. Most modulators in later years have an adjustment Schrader valve inside the modulator to adjust how much vacuum pressure, which also control the shift pattern. The bolt size is a half inch or 13 millimeter. And there's the support bracket. You want to keep that. And you can discard the old modulator. And now we have the accumulator housing. Okay, the accumulator piston and spring is behind this cover. To actually compress the spring, there is a access hole on this side. If you push this in, you'll actually go behind this snap ring 
so you can pull it out of the case. And now we can remove the cover. It does have spring tension behind it. If it doesn't, that means the spring is usually broken. This is the cover. This is the spring. It's not broken, but it's compressed. And this is the accumulator piston itself. We've already removed the uh, throttle cable right here, the detent cable on the 350, and that controls the downshift. We're now going to re remove the two coolant line fittings. Those are usually 11 16 or 17 millimeter. We still have the transmission mount low on the transmission as well as all the pan bolts. We're going to remove the transmission uh, mount first. Now we're going to remove the 13 pan bolts. The heads on these bolts are normally half inch or 13 millimeter. Now that the pan is off, it exposes the, the bottom components. The first thing we want to remove is the actual filter. There's usually a gasket. There's not much left of this gasket. It's been there for many, many years. And now we're going to disconnect the detent cable and rod mechanism. So it's critical to hook this detent system off correctly because you can attach it the opposite direction. You remove the detent cable assembly. Now we're going to remove all the bolts here are the same size. They're all half inch or 13 millimeter. They're all the same length. So you have to worry about putting them in the wrong position. The first bolt we're going to remove is actually here is the detent for the actual linkage of the transmission. Now there are two valve body gaskets. So you'll have to most likely pry this off and usually the gasket will stick to the casting of the valve body and the shift plate. Disconnect the manual linkage. Right here is a little S-clip. This is the manual valve and this is the actual valve body. This is the brain of the transmission. The oil is dictated where it goes through the case to apply different gears. We have to first remove this plate. It's the same bolts. They're all the same length again. It's a half inch head. They're much shorter than a valve body bolt, so it's obvious where they go. This is the plate. This is the actual shift plate. Try to get as much of this off as we can. So we want to remove those check balls. So this one happens to have nylon check balls. We prefer to use the steel. Now this is the actual band piston. This will apply the band and this application is primarily for downshift. I would encourage you to keep this assembly together and there's also usually filters. This is a filter for the governor assembly. You can discard that. A new filter will come in the kit. So now we're going to remove the linkage assembly. We're first going to remove the actual detent assembly here. There's two bolts. Use these are 9 16 They've been in there for a while. This bracket will only fit one direction. This holds your parking paw in position. We're now going to remove this C-clip here. Little C-clip. Now it has a 11 16 nut. We're simply going to remove this nut. This is the actual parking magnet, parking rod, and this is your detent linkage for the transmission. The manual shift lever rod. Okay, now we've completed disassembling the valve body area and all the linkage. We're now going to remove the actual pump bolts, the front of the transmission. Okay, again here, this is the input shaft and this is the stator shaft of the pump assembly. You have eight bolts on this pump. So you remove, they're all 13 millimeter or half inch bolts. They're long and they also have a special washer on them to seal the oil from going out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the front seal. 
you want to hammer the lip of the seal and collapse the seal down. You want to hammer N2, you'll damage the lip, the casting of the pump. Rear seal is now removed. Now we're going to work on removing all the pump bolts. Now some bolts are really stubborn, you have to use the air impact gun, but this is only for disassembly. When you reassemble, you do everything by hand so you don't strip or over tighten the bolts. Right through this port right here, you can actually see the intermediate clutches and the steel plates. So I have the screwdriver in, applying a little pressure, and tap the case. And there. That way you're not over pressuring that, and you're also not going to damage the pump by removing it. So you simply slide the pump assembly off. So the next components you're going to remove are the actual intermediate clutches. You have the top plate. This is a wave plate. This is a cushion. This cushions the shift when it when the transmission shifts. Then you have the first plate. and It'll be the same principle all the way through. It'll be clutch, plate, clutch, plate through each drum in each area that has clutches. And then you have the backing plate, much thicker than the regular steel plates. The next component we want to remove is the actual band. There's a band here where the, it pushes through the case. You want to release that band so you can slide this mechanism out of the case. This is the forward drum. This is the direct drum. And this is the kick down band itself. So now that you have that removed, you have a top ring gear for the front planetary. It's simply there's nothing holding it there, it's just laying there. Okay? There's a three tab washer that goes on top, but it's underneath the forward drum at this moment. Then you have another washer, sometimes a bearing. There's a very, very thin snap ring, it's about an inch in a round diameter, and that is actually inside a groove of these teeth. So you must remove that to continue the disassembly of the transmission. Okay, that is a little tiny snap ring, so make sure we don't lose that snap ring. Now you should be able to remove the front planetary. Front planetary. And then you have the sun shell. It also has a three tab washer. Now there's a snap ring in the perimeter of the case holding the center support in place. So it has an opening right near the top here. You're going to squeeze that snap ring inward and it will allow it to come off the casting of the case. Now I've started it. Walk the snap ring around. And now to remove this center support, the easiest way to do it is to push this output shaft forward and it will push the whole center support, the reverse clutches, everything out of the transmission. We now have, this is the center support, the output shaft. The center support can come right off. So these are the reverse clutches and steels. Again, you want to line them up in order. It's going to expose the actual rear planetary. This is the rear ring gear, which also is removable from the output shaft itself. There is a bearing on the back. And then there's a bearing, obviously, for the rear planetary. This is kind of complicated to remove. You need a foot press or you need a compression tool like this. Okay, now we apply the compression tool. It locks into the side of the case and you screw the center down and it will compress the spring to, to expose a snap ring behind it. We disconnected the snap ring. The snap ring came out with a pair of snap ring pliers. This is the snap ring. 
Move the tool. This is the reverse spring assembly. And now the piston. We're going to apply a little bit of air and pop the piston out because it's sealed in with three springs. Sometimes it'll just fall out. Other times you can blow it out. You want to blow air into this passage. The rear piston assembly here. So now the 350 case is completely disassembled. We're going to explain how to disassemble the actual direct drum, then the forward drum, and the pump assembly. So the first thing we want to remove is the actual clutches and steels from inside the drum. So we're going to remove the snap ring. Here's your backing plate. All the clutches and steels. So the same principle where we use the compression tool to compress the spring down. You need a foot press or a press to compress this spring down to expose the snap ring here. Remove the snap ring to take the spring assembly and the piston out of the drum assembly itself. You want to locate the opening of the snap ring and you want to compress the spring evenly down. So center it on the press. Apply the press, compressing the spring down. And now you can remove the snap ring. Okay, now that we remove the snap ring from the drum, remove the spring assembly. Now you can remove the piston assembly. It's aluminum and has multiple seals. And there's a seal on the perimeter here of the piston. It also has one here on the inside. So you're going to replace these seals. They all come in the Monster in the Box kit. There's also a seal inside the drum. This seal happens to be facing upward. You remove that seal. Now you're going to remove the outer ring gear for the sprag assembly. And you're going to remove this clip. There's a notch here. You can remove this clip, which will take off this retainer clip. It will expose the sprag assembly and allow you to take this uh, ring right off. Snap ring removed. The plate. And you simply rotate this ring gear, hardened ring gear. This will be replaced in the Monster in the Box kit with a hardened one. It makes it much more durable than what originally came Sprag assembly, again, will come in the Monster in the Box kit. We're now going to disassemble the forward drum and remove the snap ring, just like on the direct drum. Simply remove the snap ring. You remove all the clutches and steels. Backing plate, again, keep them in order. We now have to put this back onto the foot press and again, compress the spring mechanism down to remove the spring and the piston. Okay, we now have loaded the forward drum onto the foot press and we've rotated the drum around to expose the opening in the snap ring. We'll compress evenly the spring mechanism down and now the spring is evenly compressed. We're now going to remove the snap ring. Okay, now we remove the snap ring from the drum, remove the spring assembly, you remove the piston and again there's multiple lip seals. There's one on the perimeter of the piston and one inside of the piston. Remove those. I'm going to stack them together so we don't mismatch components. And we're going to disassemble the pump assembly. First thing we want to remove is the actual gasket. This gasket was the, the gasket to the case of the transmission. There's also a rubber sealing ring on the perimeter here. Going to remove this seal. There's also a washer. The later models actually had a, a Torrington bearing here. You remove this washer and then we're going to remove all the sealing rings. There's five sealing rings and what you do, there's a lock mechanism on the sealing rings. It's a channel. This is the ceiling ring. 
and actually has a lock mechanism and a lock in to position. Okay, now all the snapping to be removed. The next component we want to remove is the actual spring mechanism for the intermediate piston on the pump. There's five bolts. They all have half inch or 13 millimeter heads. So we're going to remove all five of those bolts. These five bolts are unique length. They are shorter than the bolts for the valve body. So you're going to remove the spring assembly. Then you have the intermediate piston. Again, it has lip seals, two lip seals. It has an outer and an inner lip seal. Those would be removed for cleaning. And then you get the stator side of the pump or the back side of the pump. And this is the front half of the pump. And this is the actual pump gears. There's two gears. You can remove those for cleaning. And now we'll finally expose the front pump bushing, which that will be replaced after we clean. So these are all the components to the transmission. Again, you want to keep the individual components together so it's easy for reassembling. So now we're going to take all these units, clean the case, wash all these components, and then we'll start again with the reassembly.